can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man stepped in a room with legends, Rio and Steve You know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League He's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is it's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. Vibe, vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know this. Are we recording yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not motivated. The motivation uh, left the Joel, building. what's happened? It's been a bit of a funny week. I don't know if it's something I ate. You're right, it has been funny. I definitely agree, it's been funny. The start yeah. of shows... In weeks gone by, the energy levels you've come in with have been phenomenal. Today, I am seeing a subdued, broken. I, I just think been, it's the end of the season. If you'd have listened to us all season, you'd have been prepared for this. No, I just think it's the end of the season. Like, your body starts to get a little bit tired. You wear you've that. not been playing, Joel. What, what do you mean? You've been watching it, not been playing. You've not been doing 14 a hey, match. I'm not like you. I'm at grounds and stadiums every week for fire. Thank you very much. I was even at Fulham yesterday, um, getting special access. I get hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You mean not like me? Like I'm not there. Like I'm not actually taking training twice a week. Like I'm not actually <laughs> coaching it's every it's single week. It's a diff- it's a different journey when you go up and down the cr- uh, country. You're just doing Manchester trips, isn't it? So it's different. Oh, yeah, and, and where's our Joe. podcast usually? London. All right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Joe. Just, uh, just can you navigate this first? Where are we going to start? Where do you want to start this week? Rio, do you want to know the real truth? I don't care, bro. Like, honestly, like, start. Where do you, you want to start? Let's quickly. I, I've touch got somewhere on... to start, Rio. Oh, no. Let me find. Actually, Let me find my this, data. This, this, Steve, Steve, you start this off for us, please, because I like your energy at the moment. I'm just, I'm just trying to find a little bit of data. So. Data. Arsenal are about to spend somewhere in the region of like 93% of this league in first and come second, right? Wow. Which is the most that any team has ever spent top of a league and not won it. But do you know who the five teams are that have spent the most time at the top of a league and then not won it? Arsenal. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Arsenal. Rio, you're in the right ballpark. But it's Arsenal for four out of the five times being top of the league the most in the season and not winning it. I'm going to go through them. So, name this the team, season, name the percent. teams. Name the teams. This year, this year's Arsenal, 90 plus percent. Yeah, 93 currently, 93 percent. It could even extend 93 percent of the season. What, and Manchester not win the league? Spring. Wow. 2003, your first title. Arsenal were top for 71 percent of the season. Yeah, they were, they were. And then we 2008, when we did the uh, the, tra- uh, the double, Arsenal were top for 57% of the season. Are you wow. seeing a trend here? Yeah, it just... No, no, wait, 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 wait there. The trend is, carry on with the stats, I'm going to bring something, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Liverpool in 1819, top for 51% of the season. And then Arsenal in 13-14, top for 48% of the season. So four out of the five biggest bottlers in Premier League history have been Arsenal. So when you say this is spurs no, this is arsenal This is what they do. Joe you know was talking, I think it was on the last time we did the podcast, and I said, Arsenal have always been piped off, and they always have like the most points from like January to December but they never managed to get over the line. And it's because hey. they don't have the bottle. They just they needed a, the no, they, they've got, hey. they've got the, the pressure is on, boom. They've got, they've got hey. the bottle. They've got Prime. They've got Prime. But I don't know I don't know, I don't know. know if Prime are going to want to be with Arsenal anymore, you know. If they, they might, they might, they, it could ruin their brand. If they bottle it anymore like that. First of all, this shout out to Prime bottle. for this sending us. Bottle. Shout out to Prime for sending us. Joe, you need to be drinking out of a big bottle like this. <laughs> Shout out to Prime for sending us bottles. And secondly, Steve, it doesn't matter what you say, we're still above Man United. So, end of the day, you can talk what you want. I'd rather be competing like we have this year than uh, have a dodgy season, up and down yo-yo season, win the Carabao Cup and then get booked out by Man City. And- hey, do you know what? As, as I was at the game against City, yeah? It was like men against boys. It felt like the way we used to treat Arsenal back in the day. 
um, for a period of time. When Patrice ever said something like that in one of the press conferences, and Maybe it was so. it was probably on a disrespectful side, but it was very true. We just felt if we were aggressive, we could do anything we wanted to Arsenal around them times. And we just felt, especially the big moments, they didn't have a grasp of how to navigate those moments. And I think that that's what we saw in this game was that there were, it, it's a young team. It's a team that's growing. It's a team that's finding their way still. And it's a team that's searching for really to, to see who they are and where they are. And they got a real kind of rude awakening and a reality check as to where you are. You're way behind City still. As close as it's been this season and as great as you've done to get to that point, you're still, when it gets to the nitty gritty, when, when you turn that corner and, you, and it says the home run on it, you need a set of different minerals around that time. And up until that point, you play with a little bit less pressure, um, which they probably didn't even know about at the time. But then all of a sudden, it kicks in. And the winning teams and the teams that know how to win and are consistently up there doing that, know that when that, 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 you turn that corner on the home run around, around March, April, there's a, different, there's a different kind of vibe goes throughout the squad, a different focus, there's a different energy and there's a seriousness that creeps into the place and you just, it's like a switch. And then bang, you start churning out result after result after result and the pressure's higher. And it's who can, who can go in that oven and sit in there and withstand that heat and that pressure longest and best. And Arsenal have proved again that they, they can't do it. I'm not, it's not, I'm not discrediting Arsenal because where they've come from last season to where they are now, you have to credit Arteta, Edu and that team. I'm telling you, you do. They've done remarkably well, but the gap is still mighty from yourselves to, to City, also ourselves, Man United. But what I would say is, it's just because the way you guys have just kind of believed you were going to win, the amount of what I saw yourself, the energy from you, from Robbie, troops, all them Arsenal fans, it's too much. I'm not the same you as know, them. Was a, I'm not the same as troops. There was a Joel Bayer impersonator. There's a guy that like rocking shades of a nighttime yeah. little yeah. mini trophy as well. Just another Joel. Like, yeah. there's not a single other fan base that's got one of him, let alone two of him. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, I, you know what, as well? I was doing that game right, and before it, Martin Keown made a comment. It threw me, man. I mean, I see Joel and Nes- Nescott, who's with us. just one comment off Martin Keown that threw you. No, he, throw, he, show, he throws in a few every now and again. Lovely. I love him. I love Martin. What a great guy. We've got to get him on, mind because you like him, you know. But seriously, we were on the pitch walking, me, Martin Keogh, and Jodie Lescott and Patrick Vieira before the game. And he said something that just threw me. And I couldn't. And, and, then, and then Simon Jordan jumped on it as well, right? And Simon, if you listen, get on the show and we can debate this as long as you want. Yeah, come on, five, and we'll, we'll, we'll debate this. Martin Keogh said, uh, Mikel Arteta and his team now are a group of winners. That's what he said. And I, straight away, I went, you got to win to be a winner, surely. You can't you can't call yourself a winner on the back of some good form. You've got to get your hands on the trophies and then you can say that you're a winner. And Simon Jordan jumped on it and went, no, they're, they're a group of winners. You guys have got the uh, the uh, quote from from Steve, uh, Simon Jordan because someone sent it to me in the group. And I was like, mate, you've never... Uh, what have you won at in your life? To be talking like that, for starters. But to be a winner... You've got to win. That's the nuts and bolts of it. I don't care what you say. You, you, you can't come second or third or fifth, but you, just because you've improved on, on last season and go, we're winners now. No, you've improved. You're doing well. You ain't a winner. Simple as. Well, that's half the headlines written for tomorrow. Happy days. I, I, <laughs> I, just, I just want to go back in because I haven't actually spoken on the game itself. I've been on the live. I've been upset. I've been depressed. And I'm going to keep it real. Not even... You not even ring some real, arms. real brief, Steve. I haven't officially spoken on this yet. Go on, then. on the back of what Rio was saying, I think you're yes, I'm about to set on Bible Five. But I think you're right. I think shut up, Steve. <laughs> I think when it comes down to the crunch and the business part of the season, there's minerals that you need, and it's not Evian, it's not you know, high waters, whatever it is, Highland, is none of that. You need proper winning minerals, man. And I think that's where we fell short. You can see it. If you go back to the Liverpool game, we went 2-0 up. It's almost like we couldn't believe it. When 2-0 up, you concede one goal, panic stations. Same thing at West Ham. You go 2-0 up, 
you can see, you know what's mad, Rio and Steve? When players are making passes, they're panicking so much that the passes are short. Have you ever been there? You want to get it just right, Rio, yeah, that it's, you're playing hospital balls. Look at Odegaard's, um, look at City's second goal when they scored and Odegaard played the ball short. It, it, it you know, you can, it's nerves. Normally, if you have no pressure, you're zipping that ball around no problem, you know, but you've got players that are, they're thinking so much. That's why Kevin De Bruyne's running behind party as if, you know what I mean? Like as if he's sneaking into a party right behind him, like in loads of space. It was, it, it was, it was sad to see because it was. What's the, the reason why, Joe? What's the reason why, though? What do you see? The re- you've been at the games. I told you it's panic. I told you last time, and everyone laughed at me. They're like, oh, yeah, like I, I, it, when you, we haven't been in this situation for nineteen years. We've had situations when we were close. When Leicester won the league, people forget that Arsenal were. We were, you know, we we were doing pretty well, top of the table. We've had a few seasons with Wenger where it looks like we're doing all right, but like this 14, has been the first. Total- this, this is the do. first, but this is the oh, first. No. This is the first. That's the name of our new show, by the way, coming up. We've got a show called coming up calling Football Heritage, just starting on Wednesday with Harry Pinero. Uh, but yeah, it it's you can tell it's panic, and it's the first title challenge that we've been in in 19 years. Do you know what was happening to me on the street, Rio? When I'll be taking the underground or walking around, people see me and they go, Good luck, yeah. Good luck, yeah. Bro, the pressure was so high, I thought I was playing. <laughs> like, as if people were talking to me as if I was gonna lace my boots up that night, and as if it was me, they said, "God, you know what? Yeah, do you know what it's like, Rio? When they talk to you and they're like, oh, I love what you did. Oh man, Champions League. Oh, Rio, good luck.' They were talking to me as if I was gonna Joe, go to the had. Joe, and do you think you guys have got enough players that have walked that walk that understand no, that path? No, you bought, you bought Jesus and you bought Zinchenko, and even in those moments, they weren't they weren't big enough to get you through those moments. They didn't look like the guys who were going to be looked at. Because during the season, I thought Zinchenko has been that guy. Like, in moments where you've needed a goal or just to control games and see them out, he's been one of the guys that you look to who's, who's led that with the likes of Odegaard and Shaka, etc., the experienced guys. But in the moments, like I said to you, when you turn that corner and it's home run time, when it's the risks... It's yeah, different. It's, it's bigger yeah. and it's a different feeling in the stadium. There's anxiety, there's... There's a little bit of apprehension. There's nerves that kick in that weren't there before Christmas. They weren't there when the games are easy ozy. Now mm. there's a lot more on each game. Have those guys been able to influence as much as they did before? No. Um, and I think, I, I'll say players like Ramsdale have. Uh, I think he's been, he saved us in the first half. It could have been four or five. It could have been a pass the pad situation, as we always talk about. Um, if, if you look at, if you look at Zinchenko, I think he's suffered a bit since the Liverpool game. You can tell confidence. If you're looking at Thomas Party, I was talking about it with Anton on our new show, The Take On. Um, I was joking around saying it looks like he's had too much gel off in his, in his belly, mate. He's running around slow, looks a little bit tired. I don't know if it's a couple of the games that he's missed or maybe he's carrying something you know Gabriel Jesus as great as he is he can't do it all himself you know Saka's looked amazing this season has seemed a little bit tired for me in the last month and I'm not surprised he doesn't have a deputy underneath him as per se you know you look on the other side and you look I think Martinelli's been strong but again I've heard that for it Sir Alex said different in order for you guys to win the league Sir Alex would say you need around seven to eight players doing their thing, like seven to eight, and then you can kind of carry three. That wasn't a league thing. That was any given game. Whatever you want to call it. If you've got four (laughs) players that are at it and the rest of the, you know, the seven are not at it, it makes it a little bit difficult. Now, it's not to take away from Arsenal. Great stuff. Great stuff this season. I'm super proud of them. We've got Champions League football, but we're going to need to tighten up. At the back, players like Gabriel, for me, we, we have to be a little bit more focused because when you've got those players that are going to be exploiting you in the Champions League, any sniff of an opportunity, you know, you're going to have problems. So we just need hey, to get tighter. Look at the young talent, Charlie Patino. I know you're, oh, you mentioned man. this the other day in the, in the group, uh, Joel. Yeah, I saw it and I thought to myself, it doesn't look like he's staying at Arsenal. Um, you know, I guess it's understandable to an extent because obviously we're in the Champions League now. We're talking about reinforcements. You might need players that are a little bit more experienced, but it doesn't take away from how good he is. I asked you a question last year, Rio, because you've seen him play. 
Um, and you were, and I know you don't give props to absolutely everyone, especially behind closed doors. I said, "What do you, what do you think of uh, Charlie Patino, Arsenal young boy?" And you said, "He's good technically." Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's a, a serious player. I, I mm -hmm. think Arsenal they they, they loan because he's obviously been out on loan to Blackpool this season, played yeah. around 25, 30 games, um, and just shown another side to his game in terms of the tactical side, and obviously the being more combative. He's having to make more challenges, etc., because of the, the nature of that league and team where that team are. They're fighting for their lives in the championship. So he's shown another side of his game that he's had to develop. I think with the ball, it, there's been no doubts with that he's technically ridiculous. Um, but I think with the loans at Arsenal, they've obviously had Balogun's gone out, smashed it in France. Will he come back? Do they are, are they going to make him make come back and and really challenge for that number nine spot? Before that, who did they have that was out on loan before? They had someone out on loan. Saliba. S uh, Saliba. He comes Saliba. back in. Yeah, we've had we've had loads. I mean, we've had Maitland Niles in and out alone. We've had loads of players like coming. You know what I mean? So it's who's yeah. going to be the mainstay. Um, yeah, go on, Ray. I don't know, and it's 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 it's, it's working out who are the right ones to keep. And I think obviously Arsenal wanted to kind of trigger. I think there's a clause they could keep him and, and sign a new deal to the, to another extension to 2025. But I think it's testament to the kid. I think young kids is a big point in their career. And I think it's a good point to pick up because a lot of young players watch this show, and when Sometimes when a club offers you a deal, it's not always the best case scenario to stay and wait and wait and wait. And I think sometimes, especially when you go out on loan, you get that taste for playing men's football in front of fans in stadiums. And to think that you're going to go back and play 23 football, sometimes it's like, I can't go back to that. And it's got to be brave. You've got to be brave. And then I think Balogun's got a big decision to make as well. Does he go back and potentially sit on the bench and wait for his chance at Arsenal? Or does he go, I want to play now. I've proved my worth. And I think both of these boys, I think, have got big decisions. I think Charlie Patino has made up his mind. He wants to go elsewhere and pursue a different route and play first-team football. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's important for Arsenal what they do. I think they're obviously going to go into the market now and, and look to reinforce that midfield area. Um, and I think they're going to probably go for a bit more experience. Fair play to him. I wish him the best. Uh, and we better have a buyback clause because that boy is going to be an absolute baller in the future. Mm. When I've done the game, Celtic, I mean, uh, City versus uh, Arsenal, one of the, the, the defining moments of the game was to see the way that Erling Haaland, who is the player of the year, hands down, um, absolutely bullied your two centre-backs. Like, they could not get near him. Um, they didn't want to get near him. They couldn't get near him. Um, Gabriel and Holden. I mean, Holden obviously is, is your backup centre back, and I thought Saliba mm -hmm. was definitely missed. But yeah. those games are the moments where you've got it's like me against you. And to be fair, it's two of them against ha Haaland. Obviously, they didn't know until the game started that um, Kevin De Bruyne played higher as well. But Kevin De Bruyne and that, that, that that's the old school. That's what I like here. When I, when you try and you go listen, I comparing eras of players, yeah, and you go. That was most days two strikers up against two centre halves, man to man, two v two. Let's go. Who wants it? Who who's going to have it today? Rio, uh, Rio, put under the spotlight. Rio, real quickly, yeah. real quickly. Is Kevin De Bruyne now in the bracket of Frank Lampard, Stephen Gerrard? Yeah, of course. course, of Come course. Come on, yeah. Steve, what's and the problem? Whoa, whoa. Steve. Steve, why are you putting Kevin De Bruyne and Stephen Gerrard in the same bracket? They're not in the same bracket. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on. When you look, you know where KDB, do you know where KDB reminds me of Stevie J or Stephen Gerrard as well? Is because the way they gallop on the ball, like it looks as if they don't have out and out pace, but the way they attack the ball, the way it's honestly, it's like they're striding towards it. Do you see what I mean? I didn't know. Kevin LeBron's won how many titles? Been influential in, in, in all of those from Manchester City. Been one of, I think, one of the best Premier League players we've ever seen. I can't believe yes, you can yeah. play Stephen Gerrard. Uh, you can't, can't say that Stephen Gerrard's not. I'd be absolutely embarrassed and I'd be offended if I was Kevin De Bruyne. Honestly. He, he's one me, of the best ever. Yeah, he's, he's up just there. Just to go back to my point though, just to go back to my point, like, like, that's the question you used to get asked every week. Can you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thierry and Dennis Bergkamp or Zola and Hasselbank? Do you know what I mean? Or Dion Dublin and Huckabee? Like, uh, uh, Dwight York and Andy Cole? Do you know what I mean? Can you go to that Ruud Van Nistel or Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Do you know what I mean? Like, can you can you go? I could keep going if you want, but like, can you can you go toe to toe, two v two against these guys? 
Now it's a bit different. These guys are playing against one striker most of the time. The wide players are coming from wide areas, so it's different. When you're getting asked, when you try and compare areas, that's what makes it difficult. Like, would we, who was used to playing 1v1 or 2v2, be as good as playing against one striker, 2v1? Maybe you wouldn't. Cheeky, I don't know. I saw that cheeky huh? comment you put when you said, oh, yeah, Man United would have beat City 3-1. <laughs> Whatever you said on TV. I just thought, listen, mate, that game would be way closer. You might even get beat. You might actually get beat, but you no, just no, wouldn't listen, say that. It's a 50-50 game. They're a great team. You can't argue that. I was tongue-in-cheek, man. Um, that City team. It's Pep, man. I don't care what anyone says. Tactically, he's the best we've ever seen. I don't care. And he's the best in any area that I've ever seen. So he causes problems before a ball's even been kicked. And he's got top-class personnel. Makes it even yeah. harder. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. For me, I love Jose the most as a manager, like just his whole aura. And when he first came to the league, uh, I'd never seen anything like it. But tactically, when you look at Pep, he's doing things that I never knew you could do in football. Do you know what I mean? Some games you'll just decide to play Bernardo Silva left. But like, whatever he chooses to do, John Stones is looking like the DM of all DMs now. Like, it's, it's I can't explain it. Ridiculous. Look at what he did, uh, Rio. Drops, Mares gets a hat-trick against Sheffield United, semi-final of the FA Cup, my man drops in the next game. Who's going to argue? Who's going to say anything? But even even in, even tactically in that game, he, Rodri's always been your your sitter on his own sits mm. when you start an attack from the goalkeeper. If you watch that game, Gundogan goes in there and they become a double pivot, but both of them, to beat the press. And if they can't they can't get the ball through them, they go long into De Bruyne or into um, Haaland. Like yeah. the way that they've changed, the, just a little nuances tactically that he done in that game, even even the, uh, Haaland, do you expect to be playing right up against the two centre half? Yeah, Dropping in, asking him, attacking, challenging us. I just thought to myself, I just thought to myself, we can't. We didn't see the ball here. Like there was one point in the group chat, I just said, I just want to know when we're gonna get the ball back. And everyone, no, no, started. but that's, that's my point. That's my point. Tactically, he takes the game away from you, and he's got the players to execute. Like he's got the best players, and tactically, mm. he's the best. How can he lose? Cancelo, who? You know, going back to um, comparing across eras, there's a few things that have happened since the sort of tactical shift from 4 4 2 to what I would probably say is a predominantly 4 3 3 kind of world in the Premier League now. It's not everyone, obviously, in these variations of that 4 2 3 1, 3 5 2, there's all sorts of different ways of, of carving it up. But one of the things that we have seen is there's been an increase in goals year on year on year. And I think the highest ever goal season was like two years ago. So there's been a, a like a significant percentage increase in goals from the first sort of Premier League years to the recent Premier League years. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Like Rio's talking about strike partnerships. She was up against two. The wingers she was up against, well, midfielders rather than forwards. Yes, they're going to be coming up running against fullbacks, but they started a lot deeper. They, they were part of the midfield. Whereas now you're up against three forwards, I think. You know, you're not looking at the likes of Mo Salah. They're not getting back into midfield and, and forming part of a four. They're staying high. They're cheating. So now it's it's four plays three rather than, you know, four up against two for the most part. And I think that's led into a little bit of a, a goal creep. I think that's why you're seeing crazy numbers of goals scored on a, a regular basis. I think there's also a shift between the teams that are at the top of the league and the teams that are at the bottom of the team. I, I think they've they've been a widening gap that we've not seen. When they see, and, and that's provable by how many points that you're getting. Like the Chelsea team that got 90-odd points under Conte not so long ago, was that an all-time great Chelsea team? Or do you just get more points now? You know, we see Manchester United get 81 points under Jose Mourinho with, with Ashley Young as captain. Is that the sort of all-time great Manchester United team? Got more points than the treble. The fact is... You've got to be careful, you know. Ashley's coming on soon. That's fine. Ashley Young, that is. Ashley Young, face to face, face to face. Fine. You can sit right next to me, and we'll have a chat. Face to so face. There's been a points drift, so I think there's more goals, there's more points for the teams at the top than there ever has been, and that's not just this City team or, or that Liverpool <coughs> team a couple of years ago. That's across the board. Like the the teams at the top are taking more points and scoring more goals. So I don't think it's comp uh, I don't think comparing across eras is fair. You know, you're yeah, talking you, about you, different systems, right. different, games, different rules. Some of the tackles that happened in the 90s, you, you're talking like parliamentary questions for them now. Like, you, you just wouldn't be allowed. So the no, game is right. different. You're probably right. I think this I am right, Joel. I do. No, you're, I'm no, I'm right. This doesn't take away from the fact that United bottled it against Spurs, 2-0 up, 
um, should have won the game and uh, it didn't happen. So uh, I don't want to dwell on that. I just want to remind you guys, you guys want to talk about bottling, let's not forget. But you played Villa yesterday. Um, yeah. Stop their term game on beat and run. Unai Emery has come in and created, he's, he's producing miracles and who steps up to stop him? Bruno. Sit back down, Unai. Have a reality check and know your place. Don't, Rio, you, don't go on as if you swiped them to the side. Like, do you know what I mean? It could have it could have. We gone. deserve to win the game. You, you did. seen Bruno's did. numbers. Steve put Bruno's numbers in here yesterday. Wow. The guy is, is just remarkable what he's doing. He, yeah, Steve right. actually said that if he was at Arsenal, he'd probably have a statue now at, at the Emirates, given uh, the numbers he's done. Uh, but he's, uh, uh, he has, he has listen, uh, Does Bruno take the captaincy next year? 100%. Uh, 100%. 100%. Surely. I think he does. Surely. Yeah, he's got the only that. person that maybe fuck with him is, is Casemiro. And I, yeah. I, personally, I think captains should should be there a, a significant period of time. I don't think you should be getting a captaincy after a year or two. I think you've got I to think, be there a little bit longer than that. But it also depends as well. You have different types of captains. Casemiro being a captain doesn't take his game to the next level. You know, so you can afford not having him as captain. I think giving the captaincy to Bruno does. He likes to feel important. Uh, Good you know, point, Joel. Good point. He, he stopped waving his hands around as if, you know what I mean, like he's in a theatric show. Uh, and you know what? Since since then, he, since the Liverpool game, I think his attitude has been second to none and he deserves it, man. Since Bruno not... signed, sorry, sorry, just say, since Bruno signed, he's been the most impactful player that we've had the day, since the day that he's come Facts. to the club. Facts. And I think on the back of that, and he's, he's wearing the armband now while Maguire doesn't play, I think it's a natural progression for him to be the captain next season. Facts, facts. You know, uh, yeah. Well, well done to him. You guys. Well, we, wait, at... Anyway, what, what about Spurs Liverpool? By the way, hang on, hang on. Before we get into that, I've got a start for you. When we've played, when we've started, Casemiro, Bruno, and Ericsson. It's happened twenty yeah. times. How many times no. have we won? We haven't lost seventeen, and we've drawn three and lost none. Hmm. What does that tell you, Joel? What does that tell you? You want to know the truth? I really don't care at this point. Like, my you know head... Is about, Joel, do you know what you look like at the moment? You look lost, man. You look like you just can't compute anything at the moment. Like, the, your, your brain's gone. The results have dwindled. Oh, yeah. on, on Arsenal, right? On what's going wrong with them. I think some of their players need to focus on defending and not maybe seeing what's going on in the rest of the world or what people are saying. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, you do. I'm not even, I'm not even going to ask you to elaborate yeah, you do. because I, I I don't like. I think I think we we don't have to make this the what's going wrong with Arsenal segment. I think the team's done brilliantly well. We're still well, no, talking. Loads, loads if of we finish if we finish second, you know that's the worst position. We have got Chelsea coming up. I think that's a very tricky game we need to focus on because Frank Lamps is five out of five, man. You know and. Um, he needs a win somewhere. Look so at Steve's can... face. Why are you glowing? Look at this guy glowing, man. What's going on? Why is he <coughs> in, a man, in a man's failure? Uh, why is that? He He's a hater. Um, yeah, maybe I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Top I've player. never known a more, like, just... I've never known someone fail and be given so many more chances in my life. How'd you go from the... Just go all the way back to Derby. Take Derby from what was it sixth to sixth, and get a yeah. Chelsea job on the back of it. Yeah, but he didn't fail though at Derby. He just got up given an opportunity which anyone would have taken. You know, All right. and, and, Chelsea, and and considering his circumstances Chelsea. when he first arrived at Chelsea, there was the transfer ban and stuff like that. He's responsible for some of the players that we see who have broken into to world football and done well. So if you're looking at um, shout know, out, looking, Joel. Keep talking, Joel. Yeah, Tammy Abraham. When you're Looking at Mason Reece Mount, James, those, uh, Mason James. Mount. those guys have come Tamori. from his school. Tamori, you know, like Rio. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't be giving him Reece James. Okay, no, no, no. Reece James not. went on loan to like Wigan or something about five years ago and was absolutely blasting it up. Let's not pretend that front line. Still had to break, still had to break him through though, didn't he? Still had to break him through though, didn't he? So, end of the day, end of the day, you know, he's done... To, even when he was at Derby, man, like, do you know what I mean? Even having Mount there back then doing a job there, don't get me wrong. Oh, his Chelsea Tuchel, connection got Tuchel loads is, of really good loanies, which fluffed him up at Derby as well. Yeah, you're right. Tuchel, Tuchel is 
top of the tops, isn't it? Like he is mm -hmm. top of the pops, like the old school show, top of the pops, yeah. And he comes in and he does his job, he tightens it up. Shout outs to him. But I think, you know, it's it was always gonna be tougher for Frank, man. Like he's come from a you know, top club, Chelsea, everything's there, Everton. I don't know, man. Like it, I, I, it's it's not his style of football, man. It was never it was never gonna work for me, if I'm honest with you. I don't think it was gonna work. I think he's got into Chelsea and he's got into Everton and they've been tough circumstances. I, I don't think he's he's done as well as he would have liked if he was being mm -hmm. honest. And I think Frank's an honest guy. He could he would say, I think I could have done better in both jobs. He'd done great to keep Everton up when he went there. Yes. But then the following season, he had a chance in the transfer window and obviously to attain points and he obviously got to a point where they sacked him. And I think he would have said, listen, there's probably stuff I could learn from both of those times at Chelsea with a transfer mm -hmm. embargo, difficult circumstances. Um, but the, the you look at Daesh now at Everton, like he can't get a tune out of that team now. They're mm -hmm. looking in a, in, in a precarious situation right now as well. And he's yeah. someone of huge experience. So is there more problems behind the scenes that are, are impacting the manager as well? I don't know. There, there might be other things going on. But I think if we're being honest, Frank could have done, he, could, he would think I'd like to have done better at both, both opportunities he was given. He's obviously now he's at Chelsea and this team where it seemed like a broken bunch um, confidence wise and he's not being able to instill reinstill that back into them. He's not getting a tune out of these guys at the moment. And unfortunately, you just judge by results and that Frank's last few or last bunch of results. Five out of five. Five, five, out of five. He's lost five out of five. It's like it's a crazy <clears> stat, but real consistency. Yeah. It's, it's, but I, 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 it's, it's the back. next job, isn't it? It's, 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 this, is, this was like his stepping stone to go, you know what? I've, I didn't do whatever and I got the sack. I've got an opportunity. Who says no to that chance at Chelsea again? No one. Anyone with a brain? No way, man. You all take it. Hey. I take that all day I'm long. Not real. If I'm being honest, I take it for the severance pay that I'm undoubtedly going to get, right? But no one with a brain that thinks I'm going to enhance my managerial reputation takes that job. You're on what? a hiding spot in the players have already heard that mess. Why? You recently Steve. just had the bullet from them. You're Steve. not going to come in as an interim and, and nah, keep that job. Like, Look at the quality players in that change room. There's no way that you can go into that and think, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to lose five on the bounce. There's no way anyone on the planet thinks I'm going to lose mm -hmm. with them players. Do you know no the drama? Way. He's he's gone in and he's has he had like four different formations in five games. That's got to tell you, you don't have a clue what he's doing. On top of that, yeah, because he's got like 40 players. And on top of that, Steve, that's his club. You've yeah, you got to go in and stick to your guns, haven't you? Yeah, that's, you can't, Steve, as soon as you start going, his... all right, that didn't work, let's fix it. All right, that didn't work, I didn't fix it. You've not given it time. You've just Steve. given it one game, <laughs> bollocks to that. You just said a big point there. He's got to give it time. Who gets time nowadays, man? Who gets time? He's got to make. He's got to get it right straight away. He ain't got time to be sympathetic. You know what I mean? Steve, that's his club. I, if you I, were I'm just concerned, concerned to United, I'm just concerned you would take now. it. I'm concerned now well, what happens with his managerial career after. I hope that he doesn't get completely judged just on this this Chelsea spell. Um, he's gonna. Whether or not you want him to, he's gonna. Hmm. I mean, the record at the moment, the last 20 games, three wins, or is it one win? Something like that. There's no really? way. Like, think about if he comes to your club now, whatever club you are, whether that is uh, a Sunderland, a Southampton, for example, they might be looking very soon. Like, Whoever it is, as soon as they get linked with him, all of their fans just pull out his last 20 games and go, really? <laughs> and so, like, where's the desire to to bring him in? That's why it was, it was a mad idea to go in there and do that. Rio, like, my, I, got, I got a question for you, Rio. If you're in this rut of a situation and you're Frank Lampard, yeah, obviously he's the one that picks his backroom staff, like, don't you? Th those guys have got to be his eyes and ears. Do you think he came with the right backroom staff to equip him for this particular situation? I, I don't know. I know Joe Edwards. He was great in the youth system there. He broke records and then worked his way up. Um, he's a young coach. Ashley Cole's a young coach. Um, I'm not. Sh I, I forget the guy's name. Another one. I've been out for dinner with him actually, so I apologise. Another um, fairly young coach. I think experience in these situations you need, I think because he's got a lot of players to work out there, a lot of big, hard conversations every single game before and after, telling players they're not playing, keeping the ambience in the place right. I think that's most of your job. I think tactically, the coaches on his team, I'm sure they're well equipped to do that. But I think more importantly, 
is is controlling and, and keeping the, the the ambience in the place and the environment positive while losing games. Because you've got to tell world class players or players who think they're world class or think they should be playing that you're not playing this week and you're going to sit out for, for X, Y, and Z. And they're hard conversations to have and they're hard it's hard to keep big egos really, really on side in these situations, especially when you're losing. Now if he was winning games, that conversation is so much easier. Listen, bro, you're not playing, right? I'm choosing Jao Felix today. He's got two in two. We've won our last three. What can that player say? He can't argue. He I can't think. get jumped. He can be upset, but the facts are the facts. So if he's telling a player now you're not playing and I'm keeping Sanso in, and that player who's not playing can sit there and go, well, he ain't scored in four games. He ain't, yeah. he ain't, he ain't created a chance. You ain't won a game in the last five. How the hell am I not playing? You can have the argument then because you've got stats to back it up and data. Well, that's the position he's in right now. So them conversations get more tougher every single time he has to make them. That's Does it have it. to be a, a case of keeping it positive in there? Is there not a time for some home truths? Like you're not doing this, you're not doing that. Like, yeah, I think I think I think Frank's got that in him, and out from what I've heard from players that have played under him, and from I've speaking to myself, he's got a, he's got a nasty streak, Frank, and he can cut people down. I wouldn't be surprised if that's happened now. I think early on, the first three or four games, I think he would have said, let me just tiptoe my way in and try and get the guys on side. But there's got to come a point when you've, you've lost five on the bounce. You've come a point where you've got to just get under some skin and just drill a few people and put some rockets up some asses because you need a reaction. That's what he needs is a reaction. And arms around shoulders, pats on backs. I don't know if right now that's what's needed. Going to Spurs Liverpool. My reaction was the same as Richarlison's, I reckon, for the last ninety seconds. <laughs> Two clubs all over the place, man. That result said a lot about both clubs, didn't it? The way that the, the, the performance and the way they performed, up and Shambles. down, all over the place, inconsistent. Shambles. Don't know what you're going to get. Um, and Liverpool are so far away from what they've been the last three or four years. How consistent they've been. They're going to a game now. You just don't know what's going to happen. Trent's now in midfield. Assisting, creating chances like you've never seen. Um, but I just don't know what, what Liverpool are now. I mean, even going into the recruitment this summer and who they're going to buy, I don't know what they're buying for. What's, their, what's the way that they're going to play now? What, what are they? I don't, I don't know what it is. So I'm quite intrigued to see who they're going to go and get. Um, and, and, and Spurs, man. Wow. I, I watched them against United. First half was a joke. Second half, May United... They they done they they played better, but Man United allowed them back in the game to, to get a result, and they're 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 a shambles as well. The, the club at the moment, and now they can go and get who they want in as a manager. I think listen, the, the insides of the club need sorting out. And Ryan need Mason, be- Ryan Mason needs to get out of that club and go get some proper manager experience somewhere else. I don't know how this guy keeps getting the opportunity to come in as caretaker manager. He's had more opportunities. Well, than Frank Lampard. Lampard. Exactly. So uh, I think, uh, and I'm not blaming him, but I just think if you're going to be in this rut, is that really the player that, you know, I mean, the, the manager that you're going to go Some in guys there? are just on speed dial, isn't they? As think, soon as there's a pin in, they, they just was, already start packing the car. They're already on the way. Yeah, I'm on the way. I, I was, I'm, on the, I'm, I'm on the motorway. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll be that's hitting... Fight. Frank Lampard, Ryan Mason, those guys are on speed dial for these kind of jobs, you know what I mean? And and I just look at him and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I even heard him at, at the end of the uh, our post-match interview and he was just like, yeah, we, you know, we, we should have won. We had the most chances. We had the... I just think, bro, you just sound emotional to me, but I don't actually know if you've got a clue. Like, what do you do? And again, it's hard. I'm not inside the training ground, but there's different types of managers. There's types of managers that can motivate you. There's a little bit of fear in there. I know you feared Sir Alex a little bit, which helped. But when you've got managers that are emotional, that's why Vidic was saying he probably wouldn't like to have played under Van Gaal, even though Van Gaal's tactically, you know, brilliant. But yeah, man, I don't see it. I don't see it. Have you ever had the call for uh, any sort of quick temporary coaching or, or manager job anywhere? Has anyone ever tried to like hit you up just be like, gauge your interest? Uh, yeah, I've had a couple of teams like in the championship over the years, but like nothing of any, it just gets shut down because I'm not in a place to do that. Um, and I ain't got the right qualifications to go in and do it anyway. So that, that ends a conversation quite quickly. That doesn't stop people, but, Rio. 
Yeah, yeah but I don't, I don't know, man. I don't, I, I don't know if I'm. A, I don't know if this era, I'm okay. I'd be okay being a manager in this era because I think I, I'm. I'm quite a passionate person, and I think that the approach have to ask to. When I speak to managers now, every single thing is is, is thought out. They're thinking before they talk, um, and it's all methodical. I'm talk, talking about this to get a reaction, to push this button, and I can't go too hard here because I've got to keep him on. To, and I can't... Like sometimes it's just got to be raw emotion, man, and you've got to go in there and unload and let people have it. And I know it sounds old school, and I know a lot of young players today will go, oh, yeah, he's the old school mentality. But what Doesn't a good work. rocket... What a good rocket and cold, hard truths you should do for someone like me was the best thing. It refocused me, re-energised me, give me something to prove, something to aim at, to shut that guy up who's just shouting at me or who's just pointed a finger. Now, that shows there, there's minerals somewhere. That shows that like you're able to take on board information as well and you, emotionally you're in tune to get back on the road and go again. And I'd just be worried that I, if I went in like that, the players, some of the players nowadays, not all of them, but a lot of the players that I hear aren't equipped to do all that type of stuff. They don't, they don't know it. Yeah, they don't know it. They don't, they, don't, they don't understand it. They take it personal. Ringing the agents to, oh my God, I can't, can you get me out of here? He's just, he just bullying me. And, and like, oh, HR getting called or, like, it's a madness. Like, just fucking get, get with it. Like, put your shirt on, put your boots on and go out there and do your job. Like, it's, it's simple. Like, some, I don't know, man. Effort, a lack, when you see a lack of effort on the football pitch, man, that, that, I don't know how some of these managers contain like you must see it when you with, with Paddock. Like if there's lack of effort, there could only be one. Of... What? Only all ninety minutes of a Saturday. Yeah, and I bet you. I bet <laughs> that's it says something about the manager. That says something about the manager. If you ask yeah. me, your team's a reflection of the manager. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lazy bastards. All right, well, we won anyway, so that's me batting front Lampard, isn't it? <laughs> <sighs> nah. Where does right, where Harry Kane just equaled Wazza's Wayne Rooney's uh, record in the Premier League? Um, by the way. The best, the best, the best striker to not win anything, mate. Like, hands down. For me, better than Alan Shearer. Um, I love Alan Shearer. Better than Shearer. Uh, Alan Shearer won the league, by the way. Yeah, I know. Alan Shearer, Alan Shearer is a, a better goal scorer because he scored more goals, obviously, right now. By the time his career finishes, it could be different. But if you're going to say, as a goal scorer, he's obviously been a better goal scorer, maybe. They could argue okay. that even. But Kane's a better player than Shearer. 100%. Kane's got that uh, playmaking ability that I don't think yeah. Shearer had. If yeah, I want to yeah, be yeah. a striker, that's just going to bang me goals in. And that sounds disrespectful, but there's no disrespect in there whatsoever. Shearer's a machine. Yeah, like, machine. Shearer and Ruud van Nistelrooy, that you could just guarantee. You stick them in there, they'll find a way Both. to score you. Both. Devastating. No matter what team. No matter what team. But yeah, I think Kane's up there, man. Is he better than Wayne Rooney? Different type Different. of players, but is he? Not Rooney's going to find your way to do something that might not result in him scoring a goal, but he's going to win your stuff. Mm -hmm. Rooney will be like, what, you want me to play left wing? Yeah, no problem. Oh, you want me to play in the eight? No problem. I'll play in the 10. I'll be second fiddle to this guy. Harry Kane at the moment's never had to play on, or never been able to play second fiddle to anyone in his career. But now, some people that make a better player, Steve. Need to, but did Wayne Rooney need to play second fiddle to anyone? Wayne Rooney did whatever was needed for that team to be successful. So that's why Rooney, for me, will always be a little bit above Harry Kane. Why has it had different ways of dragging a team through it as well? If you were down, if you was looking for a bit of a spark of inspiration, he could do that in multiple ways, whether it be a goal, whether it be a shot, whether it be a, a, an assist or playmaking element, a tackle, chasing someone down, aggression, like... Passion. He had, he could he could change a game's tempo in so many ways that that, that you, you can't find many players that can do that. And he, that's what was a, his separation for him for me. And I think the difference when I look at someone like him and Harry Kane, unfortunately, Harry's played at a team where he can't win, hasn't won and can't win. Right? Wayne's played in a team where he's had to share the spotlight with everybody. So when a Paul Scholes or a Carrot gets on the ball or a Giggs gets on the ball, whoever. They're looking probably for three or four, two or three, four options they're looking for. They're not just looking. We, at Spurs, anyone gets the ball, the first person they think about is, Harry. where's Harry? Where's Harry? You're going to get more chances. You're going to get more ball because of that. You're going to be more exposed to, 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 to good positive moments because the intention is to get you the ball all the time. Whereas Waza, he was sharing that with Rooney, with a, a Van Nistelrooy, with a Van Persie, 
with a Tevez, with a, with a Louis Saha, with a Berbatov. He was sharing that load and that responsibility. So when he was getting it, the efficiency was probably had to be crazy. And, but he could influence the game any way he wanted to on any given day against any opposition. Different. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm taking Rooney over Kane all day long. Sorry. Yeah, I am as well, to be fair. But yeah, and Kane he won trophies, bro. And he banged in trophies year That's after enough. year. Real, what's he won? Oh, everything. Other, um, other than international level, club level, done it, done a lot. I think it's about time we round up uh, the scores. Uh, wait, before we do that, did you guys see the memes that were flying around of Virgil Van Dijk? The internet error is horrible, you know. What I did, because I knew you were going to attack me with Arsenal all day long, I went and I got some screenshots of times when you've been put upside down and done the limbo one or two times. <laughs> uh, or Suarez, well, he kind of, he had, did he not have you run into a player? Was good. No, that Suarez one was wasn't Suarez. It was Evra. Evra's absolutely mad. Well, but Rio's upside down, bruv, doing... Yeah, doing Evra, Evra was so upset. Do you know the madness is, Joe, right? That morning... But, Patrice come into my room, yeah, and yeah. said, Rio, what should I do? What should I do, man, with the Suarez situation? Because uh, allegedly, it was allegedly at the time that Suarez had said something that was a bit yeah. racial, etc. No, he did. Was it was no legend. He did. Yeah, he did. No, it was like a, no legend. He said it. He said that ish. It, it was it. rash. It was rash, yeah? Right. It was bad. You shouldn't have said it. Allowed it. Allowed it yeah, we got allowed it. Um, politically correct stuff. It was rash. Anyway, he said what he said, yeah? And Patrice come to me in the morning and went to be Rio, what do you think I should do, man? Do you think I should shake his hand? Because you've got to do that respect thing before the game. We've got, got to shake hands and blah, 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 down the line. And I said, boy, sometimes a bigger man just says, you know what, let me shake his hand or whatever. And I said, but me, I, I probably wouldn't shake his hand. I don't know. I just, maybe that's just the way I am. I don't know. Put me in that situation. You could say what you're going to do. It happened. Anyway, we get to the point and Suarez doesn't shake Patrice's hand. Patrice put his hand out and he didn't shake his hand. And Patrice was like, what? And then he come to me to shake. I just moved my hand and said, no, nah, you're disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that, yeah? And then we got into the game and I, see, I said to Pat before as the game started, stay calm. <laughs> Pat, stay calm. And he's gone, nope. And the guy <laughs> fucking tried to kill me, bro. He tried to take me, <laughs> and set me in half. But all of a sudden, I'm chasing. I'm going alongside, I think, I was going um, with Suarez. And all of a sudden, at the cool of my eye, I see a red shirt thinking... <laughs> He ain't coming to me. He's gonna get <laughs> Suarez. Suarez is getting, he's gonna be in a sandwich right now. And he's missed Suarez and took me out, bro. I couldn't believe it. And then when I looked at the picture after, I, no wonder my back was in trouble for the next five years. I took L four and L five right out. <laughs> the, the lumbar spines in all sorts of bother. I needed yoga, Pilates, the lot straight after. It was unbelievable. But I meant that's the, how the upset he bro. He was so upset, that. Patrice. <laughs> So um, I understand it. And at the end, I said, you know what? I let you off because uh, you almost ended my career, man. But I understand why. So you have the BVD one. We have your image. We have the Lissandra Martinez one earlier on in the season when Salah made oh, By the way, I know you've had to search hard, f- that high and wide for that one. Nah, it's, it was easy to find. I can't lie. It was, it was the easiest one. I'll, like, I'll give you this. My worst one. My yeah, worst one. Who do you reckon done the best skill against me ever? Joe Cole sent me Joe Cole. Joe Cole sent you to the shop. I actually got sent out of Stamford Bridge. I done a lap and came back in, and the ball was in the back doesn't, of the net. Doesn't is it Terry on that flicks you or is it Roy Keane that he flicks? Uh, no, he flicks uh, Roy Keane. Uh, you know, uh, Cole, Cole he took it back to the Cole streets, and I didn't know he had that still. That was at West Ham. If it was at West Ham, Joe Cole, I wouldn't have even gone to him like that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it was Chelsea Joe Cole, a bit more work rate in there, thought them kind of skills and dubs had left his body. And he just said, no, nah, re- rewind, rewind. <laughs> Late 90s, early 2000s, hold that. And I was just like, nah, man. Oh, Whoa. nah. Felt that terrible. Is absolutely one brilliant. One of the darkest days, personally, individually, on a football pitch for me, that one. So you see now we've got memes, yeah? Oh. What? You know, like now it's memes. It's not like, but what was it back then? Is it like, Scolzi going, oh, did you dare? Or what? what it was personal said? pride, Joel. It was personal mm. pride. It was if a man done you on the pitch, you looked around at change room and you and inside you're going, 
thinking you just got hammered. He's thinking you just got dealt with. He's thinking you just got absolutely annihilated and you're meant to be a teammate of mine. We're trying to win leagues. That you take yeah. it personal. It goes home. You can't eat yeah. your dinner properly. It's nasty. So I sympathise now wholly with, a, with today's generation of player because these guys, the, the, the internet never sleeps. And if you get destroyed or skill or like Van Dijk did this weekend, yeah, that doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go away. It's there. Mm. And you wake up next morning, it's there. You wake up in a month, it's there. You wake up in two years, 10 years, it's there. It was mad. I was getting I was getting images of him on Connect Four. I was getting <laughs> images of him like it was it was so mad. Like I just thought to myself, right, like obviously it was bad, didn't it? But you can't get away with it. It's like people are waiting. Like I was having yeah. pictures with all sorts. A lot of them were just jealous United fans, if I'm honest with you. But it, it it was funny. It was it was hilarious. It was funny. Anyway, let's wrap up the scores. I don't know why you're making that face, boys. Uh let's wrap up the scores. You got Bournemouth, who are safe. Um, great job this season beating Leeds. Sorry, can we just shout out Gary O'Neill? Neil. Gary O'Neill has been an absolute genius in what mm -hmm. he's done at Bournemouth. I had them out, dead and buried, gone. Mm -hmm. No one could have bet against them going down. Mm -hmm. He has turned the tables massively there, and what a wonderful job! Shout out mm -hmm. Gary O'Neill. What a great job he's done. Young English manager getting the opportunity and taking it with both hands. Yeah, especially after what Scott Parker said. I thought they were down and out. I just thought this club's a shambles. But yeah, great job. Newcastle beating Southampton 3-1. 1-0 um, down as well. Boy, Callum, Callum Wilson. I weren't having him before, you know, Rio. No? Well, you yeah. know what's been good for him, I think? His reaction to a challenge from within. Isak, Isak. brought him for big money. Can only yeah. play one of them at a time. And the one's yeah. going in scoring, one's going in assisting, one's going in banging a goal, one's going in, and they're yeah. doing it and looking okay with it and happy. Yeah. It's a wonderful place for Eddie Howe to be when yeah. he's got inside house, in-house competition, and they're mm -hmm. all thriving. Yeah. Newcastle yeah. are on the roll. Yeah, they are, man. They really are. Palace. What about, being... hey, what about, hey, what about Brighton 6 0, by the way? Well, it's the reaction, isn't it? Because they knew they deserved more from the United game. So they said the next team's going to get it. And uh, unfortunately, you know, for Wolves, they got it. But the Zerbi, well done. I'm looking forward to going into Brighton. Yeah, and, we uh, play them on Thursday. Mm, Not looking forward to that. But, yeah, I think I think they owe you one still. I really do. I mm. think they owe you one. So don't I'm be surprised. So nervous. Yeah, you should be. Uh, Crystal Palace beating West Ham 4-3. Listen, I thought Roy Hodgson was 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 extinct. But um, it looks like he's still, he's still got a bit in him, isn't it? Roy Hodgson, you say? Roy Hodgson, who retired from football last year, went and kicked it about Marbella for about six months, came back and has won more Premier League games with, what, six games, I think he has, this season, than Frank Lampard's managed in wow. 32. Roy Hodgson. The guy was coaching six years before I was born. What's going wow. on there? Wow, he is mad. When he got given a job, I, I like many was my eyebrows were up, mate. I was thinking, what is going on here? Roy Hodgson's been like reincarnated and brought back from like, whoa, where is this from the wilderness? And I reckon even some players in that change room were probably going, oh, not Roy again, Jesus Christ. But he has changed everything about that team. They're now fighting. And wow, what a job he's done. Yeah, yeah, he had, big up, big up he was experienced 30 years ago. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? Because as it stands, Steve Parrish looks like he was right. And I was so against Vieira getting a sack in, especially after what he did last year. But as it stands, that's why that is why I don't run Crystal Palace Football Club. Maybe and that's Vieira why needed more time. Maybe it was a blip. And that is why, even when I said Arteta out, it's okay. Because sometimes <laughs> as fans, we get it's things like, wrong. Whoa. Can I it's, just say something? True. Something just popped up on my phone. Go on. We've got to get Martin Keown on it. ASAP. He just said, I think he might have said this when I was there and I didn't, it didn't register. I thought Burkamp and Ottenry was one hell of a partnership back in the day. But in De Bruyne and Haaland, I think maybe it's gone to another level. Well, you have to give it more than one season, I think. I think, I don't think...
in the future, he could be right. I heard this debate as well on TalkSport. People were saying, is Haaland better than Henri? As it stands, you've still got to give it to Thierry. I know it sounds a bit mad. You, you've got to give it to Thierry. Thierry's got the titles. Thierry's got, you know, overall as a player, he was better. It's like the, you know, we were talking about Wayne Rooney earlier on. Just a better player. He gives you something that Kane doesn't. Same with uh, Henri and Haaland. But if the years carry on and Haaland does this two, three times, then you have to give that partnership to Ireland and, and the brain. It's all about the, the test of time. Look at you and Vidic. Why you guys are considered as being the best defensive duo is because you didn't just do it for one season. Because we were the best. Yeah, continuously. You can't... Mm. You have to do it for a long period of time. So um, mm. I think we have to park mm. that conversation. Say it again, please. Say it again, please. I need, some, I need some confidence lifting for the sun. For, for, for yeah, the listen, we... I keep it real, <laughs> yeah. like, I keep no, it real, you know. Like that's why no, no. Vidic, that's why the Virgil argument is a bit like I had to apologize to you because I said, "Right, you know, good." I would see you and I say, "Yeah, but I think Virg, I think Virg has got a little bit more than you, you know." And you just look at me, but as time's gone, I, I, I think it's too early when you can say that they're in, that that De Bruyne and Haaland are at another level to Henri and. Thierry, what Thierry Henry and Henri, or Thierry Henry and Burke have done to teams for a period of time, oof, mm. like wow, what they were doing, they were an unbelievable team. But they were they, those two were the attacking force within that team, man. They were phenomenal, man. That ridiculous blend. I, the other day when I saw if if Harland and De Bruyne play as close as they did the other day against Arsenal, like they did that day. I say it's a good comparison, and I think wow, yeah. it could be it could be something we can talk about in time. But again, time. But De, Bruyne, De Bruyne doesn't play that close to him as often that often. Nah, he only decided to do it against us, mate. Ah, he saw scary. weakness. He saw weakness. He wanted to punish the weak. They wanted to punish the weak. It was scary good. Hours. It was a good partnership. I liked it. Wicked, scary hours, guys. Uh, I think can I see a quick shout out to Rid van Nistelrooy? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Me and I in. In, in a cup. Um, and dancing, yeah, yeah. I'm looking good doing it. Yeah, the move. there you go. You can see. You know right what? Now. He's one of the ex players. We should do a, a bit on this year. Or you might have it for your show, Steve. Ex players that look better now than when they did when they played. Well, yeah, Ash for one. Yeah, the players that that he had when he were playing. I know, and then players that look worse now than when they played. That oh, the John O'Shea, <laughs> get him in there, <laughs> John O'Shea. <laughs> Well, Brother, you know he looks worse now. That's why you 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 had us in the group chat going back and forth last time. You but know, what? you know he does. John O'Shea. You think he looks worse now? Yes, I do. Wow, Shazy. We need yeah. to come on and, and, and like, like put a bit of gel in and come in and like after a little tan in Portugal and then come in and say pardon Joel. Uh, I, can't believe you've gone straight for, I can't believe you've gone straight for Shazy. Because we know, had a little straight time, that one was. Joe looks identical, and they could have just finished today. Vidic. So Wes Brown and Darren Fletcher and Vidic actually look I like they've just stepped off today. Thierry Henry as well, you know. Thierry Henry's aged like gracefully. Do you know what I mean? Like he looks like a kid. Don't say Fletch. He, he never let this live down in the in the, <laughs> in the what's that group? Do you know what? Real well. looks well different though. You put some you put some size on I Timber. Would say. The, there you the go. Beard is, the beard is bearding. The teeth are teeth in. Gone from a centre half you know I mean? to a second rower, I think. Yeah, yeah. Beard. I've got, I've gone from, I've gone from a Premier League player to front page of GQ. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who else? Who else? There's a few. There's a few. You know what I mean? There's, a, there's a few that. Yeah, I'm put doing it in that. the comments, man. I want to see who looks better now in retirement than when they played, and who looks absolutely worse now than when they played. Down What's and Cristiano going to look like when he finishes? Gonna look like now, mate. Maybe, yeah, but yeah, maybe the change. motivation to stay in shape is to stay at the highest level. Maybe he'll once find. he retires, has he still got that? He'll find mm. something. Oh, someone put, uh, uh, someone put no, Brazil in another. Cristiano and how vain he is, and how much he loves his good looks, and how much he wants to look tip top. There ain't going to be much change in him. What yeah. if he does though? What if he goes absolutely Jack Nicholson on it though? Oh, that would be <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd cane him. I don't think he'd allow it. Seriously, nah. he would not. I'd cane him. I would hammer him if he puts a. Has he got a little derby sitting over over his <laughs> belt, and he can't see the name of his belt, the buckle, <laughs> and he can barely see his toes, 
and he's resting his arm on his belly when he's drinking a pint. Oh my god! I would love to see. I'd pay a lot of money to see that. Um, um, Brazilian Ronaldo, the original yeah. goal. Mm. But do you know what? He is wham though. He's absolutely yeah, enormous. He don't he's need to look like nothing because when we yeah. see him, we're all still in awe, bro. I don't yeah. care. R9. Doesn't matter what R nine is. R nine. He's still, but you know what? He's not. He, he, you touch him and you go, "Wow, my man's tonk still." Oh, he's athletic. Yeah, yeah, he's athletic. Still. He's like, yeah. he, you could, he, if his knees could handle it, you could stick him in a game of rugby and he would an, eliminate people. Like, and you know, power. one thing for sure. Well, before we go, one thing for sure: if he dropped a step over, you're gone. Yeah, yeah. Still, my goat. Do you still, I mean, we saw him playing paddle, so we know that like, he's still got some level of agility. He, can still he was move. sweating, mind. He was sweating. But, like, oh, he must have some footwork still. Should have yeah, thrown a touch lose that like, footwork. see what he does. It's Listen. like my two-touch. You just don't lose it. Yeah. Ask Olsie. <laughs> Coming soon. Guys, I've got to read out the rest of the show. It's bank holiday. We're out here trying to enjoy the evening. Uh, congratulations to Kieran McKenna and Ipswich Town on winning promotion to the championship yes. with the highest win ratio in Ipswich Town's history, 56%. They had the most goals scored, 99, and they had the fewest conceded, 32. Big wow. ups. Shout out Thanks. McKenna. Shout out Mr. McKenna. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, Vincent Company. Vincent Company. They've won the league as well, man. Yeah, Vincent Company. We didn't shout out Wrexham last week. Got to get Ben Foster on Rio really soon. He owes you a little yeah. one, man. You did some stuff ben, for you him owe recently. Me, man. When you open up the doors, man, come on. Ben, big up Michael Carrick as well for taking Middlesbrough from 22nd to 4th in the Championship yeah. and into the playoffs for the, of the Premier League. Uh, since Carrick took over, his record is, it is 29 games, 18 wins, 3 draws and 8 losses. He's done his thing, man. Hopefully he doesn't go mm. to Tottenham because it's too soon for all of that. Stick with Middlesbrough. Keep getting the, you know, the That's experience. a huge decision, though, because bringing Middlesbrough, uh, bringing Middlesbrough up, they're not going to have the same season. So, and same with company as well. He's got a massive decision to make. Do mm. they do they come up and try and stick to their philosophy? Because it ain't going to look the same. Well, and according to you, Steve, according to you, Steve, they should stay because when Frank Lampard was put in the same difficult situation and he went back to his club, you hammered him. So, who did, who did Frank Lampard get promoted? Tell me again. What'd you say? Who did Frank Lampard get promoted with? Well, he didn't get promoted, but he did a I good job with Derby. Did he? Did he not? Made. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Then, all right, it's guys. Not about going back to the old club. <laughs> I'm saying about getting promoted with the team that you're with, where you've been successful, where you've implemented a what, style is of Carrick play. Promoted. Carrick's not promoted Maybe. yet. He's in the playoffs. Can you continue that though? If you was... yet, mm. we don't know. We don't know. Well, that, that's the Maybe. whole point of making Joel is can you? Because you see a lot of teams, and that generally the start of the season, some of those newly promoted teams they stick to their philosophy. They go on like six, seven games, massively outstrip everyone. Then someone, usually City, sadly, puts about he seven out. them, and they <clears> shit <throat> themselves and start going four, five, one, and, yeah. and trying to obtain. And I think half the time you should just do what got you to the dance. And uh, and then you know it's it's how long do you, you take those big beatings because we've seen those mm. nine nils happen in the Premier League and no one wants mm. to be on the end of those. I want to I want to move it on to a game that I was at yesterday. Um, there was small hope for a few minutes. Fulham versus Man City. Uh, I was invited by the lovely people of Fulham. You went quiet Leicester. in the group after that early one. What happened? Mm-hmm. Would you say sorry? You went quiet in the group. What happened? What do you mean I went quiet? Was it, did Fulham get an equaliser? They did. What happened after that, Joel? I messaged the group saying, come on, Carlos Vinicius. Come on, you <laughs> Fulham. Yeah, and then Wait. what happened after the equaliser? But it was a great uh, goal from Alvarez, uh, isn't it? Like, where was you? Hey, where was, was you? I, <laughs> where was I? I, was, I made sure, it is Rio, I asked Fulham, massive shout out to Fulham, by the way, Jamie Dapper, the fantastic people over there who had us go in. Um, it was a Fulham for all event, designated inclusion match day. So we went in there and we said, you know what? Uh, let me see if I can support Fulham because they do great stuff for the community. We've got you and Jack. The- yeah, me and Jack on the inside. But we're here, Fulham versus Man City, the changing rooms before the game. Look at this, man. Look at this. This is beautiful. This is it, innit? You can imagine the vibes. You can imagine the tactics. What's this tactic? 4-4 win. 
All right, so we're in the press room right here. You can see all the top journalists are in town. Great communications gone out today because of the inclusivity day that it is. Follow me, follow me. You got uh, club fans waiting for the players. <laughs> Fulham for all. Let's start off with inclusivity, man. How welcome do you feel coming here? Yes, it's, for us it's very important the inclusivity and uh, everybody's the same. Uh, we are. Every we are all human, you know. We can see that uh, the people here are very nice. We are, they are very open mind. Uh, we can speak with everyone here, so it's very cool. Can you give us a call? come on Fulham? Come, come on, on Fulham! What's the score prediction? Do you know, it's going to be a hard one. What's that? What's that prediction? 2-1 Fulham. 2-1. Okay, guys, so we're here. Pitch side, look at this. Grass is green, cut to a T. Got the Johnny Haynes stand over here. The beautiful thing about the Johnny Haynes stand, look at those seats, they're listed. That means you can't remove them. That's where they are, they ain't going nowhere. In fact, you know what, let's go check them out now, come on. You know what, there's just something about when you're at a club and it just oozes history, man. Absolutely love it. We've actually got Johnny Haynes right here. You know, they make sure they honor their players. Let's go see what else we can find. Let's go. The Riverside stand, can you tell us a bit about it, please? Yeah, the Riverside Stand is uh, an amazing experience for supporters to come and watch a football game. Mm -hmm. um, at Fulham, we always want to think outside the box and give our supporters and those connected to the club that, that great experience they deserve. Top of the Riverside Stand. This is beautiful, man. Look, as you can see here, look at the view. Check it out, man. If you're someone like Stephen Housen, who thinks they're a tactical genius. This is a perfect place to sit because you just get such a view. You can see how the teams are formulated. You'll be able to see all the runs. Half-time, Man City lead, Fulham 2-1. Howland with the first goal. And then, yes, after that, Vinicius equalises. But then Alvarez with a screamer outside the box. Honestly, there was nothing the goalkeeper could do about it. Come on, Fulham. You've got this. Fulham for all. And that's it, an incredible day here at Craven Cottage. We're here at the Riverside Stand. I'm telling you, you're gonna struggle to find views like this anywhere in the Premier League. Thank you, Fulham, for being so accommodating, and I'll see you soon. Joe Bayer, signing out. Peace. I went in there to jeer up the boys, because I thought, if, if Fulham can get some type of result, even if it's a draw, then that means City, if they lose another game, then we're back in there, right? Anyway, cut story short, I went inside the dress dressing rooms, um, visited the Riverside stand and ate the great food. And in the end, Fulham put up a great fight, but it just wasn't enough. It was unlucky, but maybe next time. Thank but you. It shows you. you the depth. It shows you the depth again. City, Alvarez comes in out of nowhere. I know he's a World Cup winner, but he comes in out of nowhere, gets a goal, gets a penalty. Have that. He, it's the difference, cold. man. It's the he's difference. Cold. He's cold. Do you see the goal? Yeah, man. He's just a killer. The kid's a killer. Unreal, like what the, what they the, the amount of, they can shuffle the pack. Foden's not even got going yet. I started the season well, then obviously they ain't really got going this, this part of the season. I, mean, I bet you by the end of this season he'd be on fire again. It's what he it does. He just turns people on and off. Rio, I've got a question for you when it comes to Phil Foden. Do you think Pep fully trusts him? Yeah, but I just think he's got great players in his squad. Like Mares was flying, he takes Mares out of the fire, out, out of the firing line for a bit. Sit down, yeah. just relax. He, there's the only reason. a couple of players like Gundogan, De Bruyne, Haaland, um, Stones at the moment, but even he comes out as well. Like them, them mm -hmm. midfield attacking players I mentioned and Rodri, they're the only players that are ever present all the time when they're fit. The Everyone difference else is has though, to shuffle. But the difference is though, as sick as Foden is, he came on yesterday and I thought, what oh, a baller. Ball's coming in, technical ability out of this world. Doesn't even play like he's English. Plays like he's Spanish. Um, I, but my question is, I, if, if I was to ask you what's his main position in Man City, you probably can't tell me because he switched around so much. And that makes me question if Pep fully trusts him, him individually. Yeah, but you say that. And he, he, the way I saw him talk about Bernardo Silva, who's very similar to Foden in that he doesn't have one position. Mm -hmm. He plays either sometimes the eight. I've seen him play the holding role at Chelsea away. And I've seen him play right wing or left wing. Left back. Like, left back as well. So... He's one of the integral players in this squad as well, who Pep absolutely kind of loves. But it, it, that's that. I don't see that as a negative. I see that as this is just another string to his bow and makes it so un unpredictable when you see the team sheet. It's another problem for the opposing team and opposing managers. Foden, 
he's going to be a mainstay in this team. He's going to probably be at City for life. And he's, he's, he's going to become the Gundogan or the David Silver, I think, of this team at some point. It's just a matter of time. Um, and, I, and I think genuinely, Foden should have the England team built around him as well. That team, the way that he plays football, I just think that this kid, if, you, if he was Spanish, they'll be doing what they're doing with Gavi and Gavi Pedri and with Pedro. Foden. That's right. what they'll be doing. None of this is too young or in and out. Or they go, that's the guy. We've got to build it around them. And unfortunately, yeah. we just we, we haven't done that yet with England, with any of the young people. You've got, got, that, that's the guys. They're in their plan. Build it around them. Yeah, because you've got to manage that thing. Harry Maguire's the best ball-playing defender in the world and he's willing to stake his reputation on that as well. Why have so, you got to bring Harry hey, Maguire into and, this conversation? Hey, man? I'm bringing Gareth Southgate I'll... into it. It was just an example that was at the top of my head, that's all. Steve, Speaking of Phil man. Foden, have you seen Shay Lacey, the young kid at United? Um, carbon yeah. copy. Yeah. yeah, literally a copy paste of Phil Foden. He looks ridiculous. Yeah, uh, where does he play in a Man United um, system? Shea not Lacey. sure to be honest. Well, I think you've got you can play him as a, a wide forward, not a winger, and I think you could play him as a ten where Bruno plays. He's obviously young enough to probably take over. From Super football. talent. Super talent. Guys, I'm out now. Uh, yep. See you guys in the office and stuff like that. Have a good one. Rio, thank you for your time. Steve. Yeah. Uh, this is Bible Bible signing out. Peace. See you there, guys. Come